All right, got the box opened. Use my knife here. I like this knife. Smith and Wesson Extreme Ops. I got that for for free because I bought some guns, I guess, at Smith and Wesson. But that's a nice little knife there. So here's all my goodies here. They individually wrap them. I have to shut the camera off because I can't open that with one hand. Yeah, here's two electrolytics. Uh, they're um, 1,000 microfarad, 35 volts. Let me talk about caps for a minute. That will make it really easy to understand, I think. This is how I do it. So someone else might do it different. And I'll lay it out so that it's easy for trolls to understand too if they want to. But I got this here. I found out that the new caps, a lot of them are enlisted for a thousand hours minimum life at 105 degrees Celsius. And I figured, well, what what would the lifespan be at 65 degrees Celsius, which is about 140 degrees? I'm thinking, well, it might get like 140 inside of here next to like a heat sink for a transistor or something like that. I'm just taking a guess because I haven't measured it, but it's just a guess. Well, I did find out that for every 2 degree, well, actually, it's 2 times the life for every 10 degree Celsius drop. So from 65 to 105 that's 40 degree drop so that's uh, four 10 degree drop units times two is eight so for a thousand hour part that's um, eight times a thousand which is eight thousand hours so a capacitor that says it can have thousand hours of minimum life at 105 degrees C will have about 8,000 hours of life at 65 degrees C. Now how does that affect me? Well I figure well my TV use I figure maybe six hours a day the thing is on times 365 days a year is 2,190 hours a year. But if you take 8,000, which is lifespan minimum of one of these new caps, divided by 2,190 hours a year, you get 3.65 years. So as a minimum, a 1,000 hour cap rated at 105 degrees C, uh, that's good for about 3.65 years in the set. So I said, well, maybe I want to keep the set longer than that. And the reason they do that, and now if you're, if you're a troll, again, if I'm boring you, you could just click off and don't worry about the good stuff later on in the video. You can just give it a negative review right now. But for those that are interested, um, I just wanted to say this, you know. They make these caps that last maybe five years. And that's because it goes in like PCs and other crap like crappy LCD TVs. And they figure that someone's going to be tossing the thing out the door. Like PCs obsolete in five years. They throw it away. Or they'll throw the LCD screen out and get a new one. But I figure, well, I'm going to get something better. So they do have caps that are rated at 2,000 hours at 105 degrees C. And they have other ones that are rated at um, 4,000 hours, or maybe even higher, at 105 degrees C. So a 2,000 hour cap will be double that. It would be double 3.65. That would be like uh, 7.2 years. So when I bought the caps, and this is just me now, you don't have to be like me. You could get the cheap ones. But I got, I got caps that are rated at least 2,000 hours. Because I figure I don't want the cap to like fail in like four or five years. I'm not saying a thousand hour cap would, but for another 20 cents more, I get a better cap. 
So that's why I want to talk about caps. Oh, this is a good one here. I got um, Cornell Duvalier for, um, let's see, the 0 .22 microfarad radial cap. And uh, those are made in China. That surprised me for Cornell Duvalier because you pay a little more for those and they're still made in China. So we're all getting all ripped off. But some of the caps I got are made in actually Japan. I'd rather get a, a cap made in Japan than in China. That's just me. Yeah, I'm going to start with the Verister. That was um, uh, SKU 84H1174. And I'll tell you why I'm going to replace the Verister. I'm going to replace the Verister because I feel like it. No, actually, I'm going to replace the Verister because um, the set was 18 years old, or it is 18 years old, and it was plugged in the wall directly. It wasn't plugged into a, a strip or anything like a uh, suppression strip. So these varistors, they, they weaken, you know, due to impulses and uh, spikes coming through the line. So I figure after 18 years, it's a good idea to replace the varistor. And the part, I forget what this part cost. Let's see. It doesn't say right here. But I mean, it's cheap enough. I mean, come on. As long as I got the set apart, you know, replace it. All right, there's the Verister right there. So I'm starting with the Verister because it's probably a little easier to get at than some of the other parts. So I'm like warming up. That's all it is. So I'm just going to clip the Verister out. And I'm doing that because um, I'm just going to replace the part. So there's no sense trying to save the part. I'm just going to put the new one in. And I did find out that this old one was an obsolete part, so you couldn't get it anymore. So I had to look it up on Google and then find out what uh, substitution part I could use for it. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily bad, but I'm saying after 18 years, you know, you know it's going to be taking some good spikes that have weakened it somewhat. So we're going to put a new one in. What I like about what Toshiba did on this board is a couple things. It's, it's, um, it's very neat. It's after they soldered everything, they actually uh, cleaned the board. And I've seen televisions, um, well, I've seen some televisions at least where the circuit boards were not cleaned at the factory. And it was all flux residue like all over the place. But, they did a nice job cleaning it. And they also have it labeled nice. They got the Verister label right there. So I'm just going to solder those things now. Okay, I got the lead out. Now I want to use the one-handed solder sucker I just bought. So you could just you load it up like that. And then you, uh, you start sucking. You start sucking. It's probably better if I try it from the other side of the board. But I'm just showing you what, what you do here. You you uh, melt the solder, then you Yeah, that one worked. <laughs> Actually it worked good. So now I can just solder the new the new varistor in. Clarity don't matter on this thing, but here it is, nice brand new Verister. Just get it in here. Whoops. Nah. Let's see. Here it is. There you go. Get in there. 
nice. Got this board propped up over here. So here's the leads. Make sure that's in the camera. Yeah, it is. Okay. I'm going to use my good uh, Kester solder. 60. What's the number? 6040. I'll use a thinner diameter. Clean the tip real good. And uh, solder that in. Easy as pie. Oh yeah, let me get my magnifying glass here. Use this, use the magnifying glass to, to examine my connections I just made. Let's see, it's one of these loops. So, getting all kind of reflections from here, but let me get close here. Nah, looks like looks good. Looks good. So I'm just gonna keep progressing here and get the other parts in. And there's no sense of boring everyone with every little connection. But this will take a couple hours to get these caps in. Then I'll get the set together and see what happens. Okay, now that's the relay there. And you can't see it where this camera is because it's behind this plastic brace. But the relay is down there. But what I got to do, or what you have to do, or whoever wants to view this, is uh, you got to use solder wick. And you just um, kind of heat the wick with the iron and you get that solder off of there. I get the relay out and replace that. Now I'm pretty sure the relay, I have to test it, but I think the relay that I got is the right one. I just got to verify it with an ohmmeter. So that's what I'm going to do now. Just get rid of this relay, get it out. Now I'll get back to you in a second. Okay, these are the two relays that's, that um, for the set. Okay, the original relay is this one here. And the one that Sears gave me and said it was the part to go in the set is this one. Now, if you look closely, the, um, the, bottom, the bottom terminals are the coil. And both are 12 volts. Well, that's good. These diagonal pins on the one on the left, those were normally open. If you look on this one, the diagonal pins, this has three pins. So this pin should be should be on use, the very top one. So you could just use the two diagonal pins. But guess what? This is normally closed and this is normally open. So what Sears is doing, they're repairing the sets, but when you energize the relay, it shuts it off. And when you de-energize the relay, it turns the set on. Now that's totally backwards. So those are what the, the uh, complete imbeciles at Sears are doing. They're putting in relays that are normally closed so the set is on when it's off, and when you energize the relay, it shuts the set off. So, ain't that brilliant? So what I gotta do is, uh, I gotta get a little jumper here. Now I assume I could just, maybe I could buy a normally open relay, but I think I could use this one. I'll just have to wire it where, uh, 
get a little jump around the board and run it from there to there and then it'll be uh, correct where it'll be normally open and it'll close when it really energizes the only thing is that the relay won't be sitting flush with the board it's gonna have to be uh, maybe sitting sideways or something okay what I did here is I bent this terminal down that's the one that wants to go on the board but that's the normally closed one then I gotta make a little jumper to come from here bring it to this position here so it will stick in the board for the normally open position then I could insulate this here let me put some electrical tape over that now it's not the best repair I don't like doing all that but I don't want to do what Sears apparently is doing and I think what they're doing is cutting off this one here and I think they plug the relay in and they leave it as normally closed so it'll be like what I said before is that you're actually energizing your relay to turn the set off and I think that's really really bad and uh, I don't know why they're doing that but this is the exact part they told me was for my Toshiba set so uh, that's unfortunate it really is and uh, you know for Sears to be doing that it's really bothersome to me it is so anyway I'm going to fix this up so I can use it and put it into the board yeah you see I put double strength electrical tape over that bent terminal now I gotta make something that come from here over to where that terminal should be and bring it up so that that can plug into the board okay that's that's my repair on this part here the new part there's I soldered this on here this is a lead that I took off the varister and you can see how the metal goes down here but there's nothing on top of this circuit board that this could short out on the circuit board is just the fiber part so this will go across the fiber part and then come and go into the hole on the circuit board so that, that should work okay and now I'll, I will have a normally open relay that will uh, close when it's energized like it's supposed to now I'm going to put the relay in I cleaned the holes out with the solder sucker and I left that lead long the one I put on there so it helps guide it into the hole see so now I'm going to get it in there and solder it just wanted to show you when I make the final relay connection I put this heat sink on there so I'm going to solder it real fast because I don't want my repair that I did you know to bring the lead out into the correct position I don't want to melt that solder that where I soldered it to the relay so I'm going to use this heat sink to kind of pull the heat away from it on this extended lead and solder that real quick so that's what I'm going to do I'll put the camera down okay might as well just show one capacitor I'm putting in I'm going to do the C310 first electrolytic thousand volt I mean 1000 microfarad of uh, 35 volts